Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very accomplished tech entrepreneur from Columbus, Ohio, United States of America, Mr. Prakash Bhaskar. Prakash, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Great to be here. Thank you. Prakash is the founder and president of Kyanafi, uh, an organization that is helping leaders with data, analytics, and digital initiatives. He's an author, and all of you know that I'm very partial to authors. He's an author of a book titled The Intrapreneur, Do Your Best Work, Accelerate Your Career, and Lead Yourself. And in his own words, he's an intrapreneur turned entrepreneur. So Prakash, before we start talking about Kyanafi, you are an intrapreneur turned entrepreneur. Help me understand these terms and your journey with an example. Yeah, two, two words you cannot pronounce side by side, right? <laughs> kind of tongue twisters. So, so a, a lot of us know what entrepreneurship is, right? So yeah. you decide to do something on your own, uh, either your own investment or you grow through other uh, people's investing. Uh, but the idea is to do something creative and bring to the world based on what your experience is and stuff. Uh, but not a whole lot of people leverage what is available to them through entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. right? So if you hear, especially in today's, I mean, we talk about great resignation and all of mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, my company is not working well for me or my manager, I don't get along and all of those things. Uh, but people have a lot more power to Correct. shape their own, uh, how do I say, they, their own careers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what do I want to learn? How do I want to... <clears throat> come to the world with my work. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was focusing a lot through my uh, career. Again, it's not something I just read about or I had one person guide me. It's you're Mm -hmm. picking up stuff from here and there uh, as you go through the process. And secondly, it is also a lot of testing involved, Mm -hmm. right? A a feedback mechanism. You actually uh, learn what works, what doesn't work. Sometimes Mm -hmm. it's scary, right? You are taking risks. And you have an option, you can play safe, wait for your efforts to get uh, recognized and then go the regular route. Mm. Or you can actually play full out and uh, test it out, shape your own career and come out. So Mm. that's what entrepreneurship is about. Um, So in the book, I've shared a whole lot of examples and uh, my own personal experiences, what worked and a lot of what did not work as well. Again, the idea is not to make it a very prescriptive approach. It's more of, hey, this is what I went through, right? You should go and create your own story. So since, so since you started experience. speaking about your book, tell me about your book and tell yeah. me about some of the experiences that you have written about in your book. Uh, okay. So uh, early in the careers, right? Uh, we all get into, I mean, I got in through, through campus interview, like mm-hmm. mechanical engineering, and things. And after that, I came in for my master's and uh, I started getting into more on the technology side, Mm -hmm. uh, data analytics, risk, finance, uh, things. Uh, But there were a few uh, turning points really in the career where you are really at the crossroads and you Mm -hmm. have to make a decision, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, For as an immigrant coming in, I had to make a choice between whether I pursue the next big opportunity in my career or Mm -hmm. do I play it safe and get my green card mm. on in those days it was like five seven nine years you don't even know how long right i, right. I got about 15 years into the wow. thing because i switched three times uh, jobs mm. when i was about to get so a lot of people would say hey, even my own close family people were a little bit of annoyed right first time it was okay second time it was the third time you're doing the same thing and what's mm. going on with you <laughs> so uh, if, if you ask me like did I make the right choices? I think based on where I am, that's how I look at it, right? Uh, we really do not know the implications of the decisions they've never taken, right? Correct. I mean, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, but uh, really the way I see it is you are here now, make the decision and kind of go. Mm. Uh, a few other things is uh, how do you get through like internal politics mm-hmm. right, within the organization? Uh, there were several situations where the option was, okay, I either quit or 
uh, kind of throw up my hands and say, I cannot do. Or the third option is actually try and manage it as best as you can mm. while still focusing on here. I'm learning a whole lot of things here. This mm. is one of the best opportunities for kind of learning and growing. I'm not mess the, going to mess this up because one person did not work out well or my manager did not work out and all of those things. And sometimes it is on us too, right? So the examples are more of where I went and uh, kind of retraced my reaction to a specific situation. Mm. And it comes to a realization that, okay, I could have handled it better, right? Mm. Um, the, this board that you have there yeah. behind it, uh, mm. I, I keep it here, but it's also a constant recollection for me because uh, I have uh, two kids, two boys, very close together, like 21 months apart. Uh, when they were young or even a little bit about mm -hmm. seven, eight years, mm. the in conflicts were like, they will be like best of buddies and then suddenly a conflict will rise, right? Mm. So it came up in terms of, okay, the only person you can control is you, mm. right? As I was telling them, and then control change to manage, right? Mm. So I as I started reflecting through some of the situations in my own work, mm -hmm. I said, okay, I am consistently trying to teach this to my kids, mm -hmm. but I don't apply it myself. Amazing. And, uh, and it, it's not that because I have it on the board, I kind of mastered it. I still catch myself today, right? Maybe it's an action. What I say is something, or when I actually think about a situation, okay, it's not going well. Do they not want to work with me or what's going on? Or is there something else? But what has improved is I'm able to catch some of these things, right? Mm -hmm. Because to be a leader, whether entrepreneur or an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that is uh, mindset, right? Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't stop with mind. Sometimes we do involuntary actions, mm -hmm. like in a, in a pattern, uh, we just react, right? Mm -hmm. So how can you take all of that and go towards more of a responsive mode? Mm -hmm. um, so that's interesting. That's so, so, you know, when you, when you're, Thinking about these points which you said on your thoughts, emotions, feelings, words, and actions. Yeah. Uh, and you're saying these are all uh, what I may call as components of uh, a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. Do you uh, believe that we need to train ourselves to be able to uh, manage our thoughts, emotions, feelings, words, and actions? Uh, train as in, yeah, I mean, there, there's meditation and other stuff and all of those things, mm -hmm. uh, but it's more of becoming aware, mm -hmm. right? The, the training is I can sit in meditation for, uh, like, let's say 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon mm -hmm. and still spend the remaining 10 hours of my day doing things that are not going to be good for me in the long run. Right. So that's that's why my, my kind of meditative thing is more like just like even now right the level of awareness that we bring mm. into your daily activities i found that that's what uh, kind of helps okay. uh, on an ongoing basis yeah fascinating and is your book available on amazon and other platforms it, it is it is it's it's primarily here i checked with amazon i mean they haven't it's available in india because i know a lot of your listeners are there mm -hmm. as well but uh, it's sold through an external agency because amazon doesn't directly sell uh, within their own platform so yeah. wonderful thank you so uh, you know i'm going to look out for the book and the, for all my viewers and listeners do look out for the book and for prakash's you know search for him and then take your call so uh, Prakash, let's, let's move to your, uh, your, your own business, which is Kyanafi. Yep. Uh, and you say that you help leaders with data analytics and digital initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, what is the, 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 what, what is the background of the name? What does it mean? And then what do you yeah. do? So uh, when, when I got out of corporate, the main approach is, we have, we've always had internal teams and we always had consultants, right? Mm -hmm. And I've worked with a whole lot of companies as well in mm -hmm. this process. But where I feel is that missing gap is people in a consulting capacity mm -hmm. with uh, knowledge of how to operate as a corporate person, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because uh, many great ideas don't see the light of day because we don't understand the organizational dynamics mm -hmm. on the ground, right? How do I connect? Uh, so let's, my example, like data. Mm. A, lo a lot of us, when we talk about data, it, 
it's very easy to get into a siloed discussion where we focus on data analytics and ml and ai all these things are getting addressed mm-hmm. but we really don't address the existing business technology scenario how our business functions are set up what is the type of uh, organizational design that is required to make all these investments successful mm-hmm. uh, so the kiana 5 uh, d uh, even the logo is the kind of the pentagon is because i think data is not a disjointed item but is actually an interconnected for you to really get invest benefits from your investments okay we need to look at it five ways right? mm. business and technology data and analytics governance and controls uh, process improvement or innovation and uh, organization design so that so the name itself uh, kiana is uh, i was looking at uh, sanskrit words primarily around knowledge and perception okay. that's the okay. one which uh, came up kiana uh, and we thought we were going to do a whole lot of finance related uh, oh, client okay. work so can a fee but i mean we, we've been across the board airlines manufacturing retail so pharma fascinating fascinating you know when i was reading about you i was you know prompted to ask you what mm-hmm. makes a data leader because you use this term what makes yeah. a data leader and what are some of the challenges that data leaders are facing today so uh to to me the way i view it is a person in a leadership capacity mm-hmm. who wants to leverage data to improve their uh, function or business right so uh, the general thing is data leader somebody who is leading a data initiative right mm-hmm. it's sometimes like the chief data officer and all those things but i view it as anybody you can be a cfo or a cro or a cmo right in mm-hmm. fact many of the leaders i've worked with they're from risk and finance uh, mm-hmm. areas uh but they understand the power of uh, data right mm-hmm. and they they are i don't know the details but i know a lot we can do a lot in terms of reducing cost or our time to market or controlling risk now how can you help so that's mm-hmm. that's how i view a data leader right okay. and uh, there are there are two parts to it so the kiana fee is the more of the uh, execution arm mm-hmm. but i also uh, coach a lot of these people uh, and mentor and help some of them move through mm-hmm. okay, i've been a senior director right how mm-hmm. do i crack into the next level type of mm-hmm. thing so i bring the entrepreneurship concepts in mm-hmm. combine, combine it with the data leadership areas mm-hmm. and that's how datapreneurs uh, it's okay. it's kind of a separate brand by itself yep. datapreneurs uh, mm-hmm. site so we, uh, that's how it was born the kind of the combination of the data leadership uh, your second part is the challenges mm-hmm. right um, is it's not just one in the sense uh, you are basically sitting on a pad of challenges and opportunities right? okay. i i try to look at them both uh, together uh, mm-hmm. because i think one feeds the other mm. uh, talent is a major thing right but it is also in terms of how do i build that organization to be successful mm. uh, because it, data is kind of its own an animal because the problem is everybody touches it right this you can go like if it's an application it's easy mm. to say okay it's an operations customer service application or onboarding application this mm. person owns it and things when it comes to data it's like it's of interest for everybody but nobody wants to own it mm. right the, the reality and many situations it is an afterthought right we don't train our people enough we mm-hmm. don't build the level of mistake proofing mm-hmm. in the systems mm-hmm. but we want to try and fix it in the data right mm-hmm. so i i always tell the folks i talk to right they want to improve their data quality mm-hmm. uh, because we are losing a lot of uh, this thing of, uh, either regulatory is one side but even mm-hmm. to grow your company or customer right. experience data quality is a must mm. but we're not going to fix the problem by searching for data quality fixes within your data environment mm. many times the fix is actually train your front end users the right way mm. rewrite your policies differently right mm-hmm. put the right level of safeguards in the front end applications Correct. and also think about data as you're designing new mm. applications or mm. bringing in or these days a lot of vendor driven activities mm. are there like the saas mm. so all that needs to be con- data cannot be an afterthought that that's the primary thing right if you're it should be part of your new business initiatives mm. sign off and uh, another major challenge which i'm seeing is uh, because a lot of these business units senior level leaders have their own budget they think okay it's my budget mm-hmm. i can go sign with this vendor or i can buy this tool right the problem is soon the company ends up with like 15 different flavors of the same tool or mm-hmm. overlapping mm-hmm. aspects 
and it's not the flavors the problem is the integration now you okay. got to maintain it, the, the definitions and stuff in 15 different areas mm. so uh, that that's where we primarily help right we bring that full circle from ideation all the way to execution mm. uh, by working with these leaders fascinating so you know uh, now the the buzzword is data is the new oil everyone seems to be talking of data is the new oil uh, i'd love to get your perspective on this but more importantly everyone is have, has data and everyone's producing more and more data mm-hmm. how does one determine if the data they have has any value okay two 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 questions right so it, oil flour sand i mean i've seen very different uh, variations of it mm. right? uh the way i look at it is like if i'm driving a tesla i do oil doesn't even matter to me mm-hmm. right? so i view data as the kind of the motive power rather mm-hmm. than what you're putting in right? Right. it could be solar energy it could be battery powered <laughs> absolutely <laughs> right so it's it's the motive power and depending on how you use it mm-hmm. you, it can take your company somewhere right it can help it uh, protect the downside mm. and uh, all of those things Every, anything is possible right mm. uh, so the primary understanding is uh, i even have a document back to basics uh, how to transform your business with data on my linkedin profile mm. Mm. Uh, the way i approach it or where the gaps are is what portions of my business process mm. is mm. actually creating what types of data mm. right we we usually don't think about it because we think of it as files coming in and then processing you put them like we have so much talk about data science and machine learning and all of mm-hmm. these things mm-hmm. and i think a fundamental understanding of what business process is created that mm-hmm. you i can go into any team and ask like half the people will be blanking out i don't know i got this file right but the reality is data is a creation is a byproduct of some type of action either mm. we as internal employees taking mm. in mm. or some of our customers kind of interacting with our platforms or right. these days it's even your bots mm. so when you create that those data points then if you try to understand okay which ones are negotiable which mm. ones are kind of non negotiable meaning i had to have an absolute mm-hmm. control over this thing right uh, it elevates your thought process and then you are you approach your privacy your governance and quality everything very differently even mm. architecture mm. right uh, and you, to your second part of the question is we have a lot more data right mm-hmm. which means but we all have only so many many hours in a day right. you can throw any level of automation and ai and stuff but even mm. there you need to pick and choose what you're going to prioritize on mm. right so foundationally which data points or which processes are critical for my business that's the data i'm going to go after first right mm-hmm. so yeah we, we will create a whole lot of data but if i get good at identifying those noise mm-hmm. because customer experience creates a whole lot right you have social media platforms coming in right. chat calls and all of those mm-hmm. things integration so as we grow our data we are scrambling around trying to put more capacity into it or more mm-hmm. uh, juice into the processing hire more people in it but we are missing out the foundational thing of identify mm. how do i narrow down in terms of what is priority for me mm-hmm. and get effective with catching the anomalies mm. that's all we need to do right because data expansion is you will never be able to hire so many people because your data size is growing correct but if we do these two let it grow mm. but if i can identify the kind of blips right which are going to impact my business mm-hmm. either regulatory or my customers leaving or churn mm-hmm. there are very few points i mean you if you are having more than i was having a discussion with a friend of mine and mm-hmm. he said that if you have more than a dozen items mm-hmm. on an executive dashboard mm-hmm. right you are either not an executive or you don't know what an executive dashboard is well that yeah Hmm. right so it's it's very relevant it. i mean hmm. we don't have to go after everything that is there that, that's my main well said point. well said so you know prakash when i was again reading about you a uh, mm-hmm. couple of interesting comments came up so i want to ask you but the first one that came up which was the challenge is always around how to bridge the old versus the new yeah and uh, i'm assuming this is in relationship to data yeah uh, give me your perspective on how do you bridge this and what are some of the challenges with it so uh when we 
generally the business runs faster than how fast we can implement data mm-hmm. solutions right mm-hmm. it's, it's nothing new it's always been there uh especially when we want to transform there's a lot of people moving into the cloud i mean the movement mm-hmm. started about 3 4 years ago mm-hmm. uh, but it's still not stopped right a lot of people moving in, out uh, while we tend to focus on what we need in terms of capabilities in terms of platforms how do we build stuff in the cloud mm-hmm. uh, there's not enough focus in how am i going to enable the change from my legacy systems and platforms mm-hmm. and usage right are uh, training uh, mm. the users into my new platforms mm. uh, because we can build some of the most amazing products but if we don't handle this change mm. make mm. it easy basically right not mm. even handle i mm. i would say there's some level of dis- uh, disturbance and mm. in any way you will see it but if we don't factor that very early on in the process mm. Mm. we would have built amazing products but it won't get used Right, mm. your users are going to go back to their comfort levels. Mm. They're go, they're going to. I've seen cases where people will build amazing platforms on the cloud. Users will hook into the platform, mm. download everything into spreadsheet, and continue to do what they're doing here. Mm. Right. So if if we don't handle that, that uh, that's not going to go well for our investments. Right. And fascinating. That that's where the most of the challenge is as well. Um, fascinating. Fascinating. Very very interesting. And I have time for one more question, and I'm going to. Sure. Uh, take up uh, another one of your quotes okay. uh, as my last question. You say that uh, you, know, you talk of combining unconventional ideas with grounded emotional maturity for enabling change. Yeah, help me understand this with an example. So uh, we touched on it earlier on with the five uh, yeah. dimension, right? Uh, so any any change is depending on how the people who come to the platform in mm. that change process it, mm. it needs to be dealt with right so there's a section in the book even when i where i've covered our reaction to change mm. is kind of a left to right extremes the middle point is acceptance right okay it's, it's a change coming in i can accept but on the most left side you can think start from a resist point of resistance right mm. i don't want to do anything with it and then you are like maybe a little bit skeptical still mm. but somebody is forcing it on me i have to do it in a grudging way you kind of go through that right. on the other extreme is you are actually embracing change right so depending on where we play that uh, change mm-hmm. the path that we take is not conventional all the time right so mm-hmm. one example i can tell you is like in terms of the people right this is the unconventional ideas and approaches can be in even in Uh, the technology space or how we look at architectures and design mm-hmm. uh, but a people example that comes to my mind is uh, so as i was working through different levels in the leadership there was this one person who was completely resistive mm-hmm. right I, i i tried having one on one conversations and emails and things so he he would be nice and smiling uh, on your face and then go back and do exactly opposite on, on what he committed right. and stuff right, right. so Uh, unreliable and which means my timelines were getting uh, blown off as well mm-hmm. uh, so as we looked at different things so i found that probably it's not a wavelength match mm-hmm. and i'm not the most calm person also right sometimes i don't i act in ways that are not good mm-hmm. for my own mm-hmm. self mm-hmm. Uh, so but in this situation what, what i did was i actually talked to one of my direct reports and said okay he's you definitely have a higher level of eq than me okay right you can, mm. you can face any different things right mm. so let us create a sense of feeling that this person who's been resisting whatever we are mm. trying to do mm. has a lot more of a one to one engagement mm. right so your only thing is now you don't have to talk to five different people your only job is to make sure this department kind of comes through and this leader mm. buys in right mm. so I was surprised with the level of changes in, in like 2 months the guy who was resisting mm. he comes and tell me you know you know what I I like working with this guy and uh, we are getting along very well we have made plans for even for the next quarter I signed off and I I, I was surprised right mm. so normally as leaders what what we think is okay these are stuff that which I have to handle mm. right so that I went out of the way of the mm. kind, of, kind of conventional steps and said mm. okay it's I'm not getting anywhere. 
Right. What else can I do? And I, this is something I've been doing consistently over the years as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to promote people like two, three levels below. Promote in the sense like in terms of visibility, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. For executive uh, updates where I have to go, mm-hmm. I used to send people two levels below. One, they get exposure. Two, it is if they are able to step up and operate at that level, mm-hmm. I can actually take on more, right? And mm-hmm. that's another thing where the general convention is, if I delegate much, what am I going to do? That's right. That's so, it. but role expansion happens only when you take all these things, when you build your team's capacity mm. to lead at larger levels. Mm. Very well said. You know, on, on that note, and just to you know, give you an example, what I was taught when I was much, much younger was that the mm. only way for you to grow is to uh, find your successor as fast as you can. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the message you are giving also. Very good. But, Very good. Uh, 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 Prakash, thank you so much for talking to me and, uh, you know, uh, talking about the five values you've put just behind your head on the blackboard, which is on your thoughts, emotions, feelings, words, and action. Thank well, you I talking. abbreviate it as uh, TEFWA. It's easy to remember. Own, so own your TEFWA is the, is the thing uh, locally at home. The way we talk. Yeah. Own your TEFWA is, so. is fantastic. Uh, thank you for speaking to me about your book, uh, entrepreneur turned entrepreneur and for the amazing examples you gave me. Thank you for talking to me about Kanafi and uh, all the work that you're doing on data for so many different people. Thank you and good luck. Thank you so much. It was great uh, being here, Ashtosh. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.